Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. Hope you are all doing well and super excited to learn more about data science in this new year. I'm Nilesh and in this video, I'm bringing to you introduction to Keras in deep learning. So this particular series, we'll be talking more about deep learning and how we can create models to solve problems in this particular uh, area of artificial intelligence. If you are a complete beginner in data science, I definitely suggest checking out the beginner series and the intermediate series. However, if you are a beginner in Keras, that's not an issue, because here in this series, we'll start from step one and gradually move more advanced topics in Keras. So let's get started and see what Keras is all about. And by the end of this video, you'll be familiar with these topics, what is deep learning in a very, very short introduction, then the creator about Keras, and why and what about Keras. And finally, we'll look at how to install Keras. Basically, we'll be installing TensorFlow. So what is deep learning and what are neural networks? This is a very, uh, very, very crude example, but let's say we have a uh, image recognition problem where specifically we'll talk, we are talking about uh, images of digits zero through nine. And to, put, to classify these digits in a neural network, you'll have different layers. So each layer would have coefficients associated uh, with each layer. So each layer would have, let's say, three nodes, and each node would have a coefficient or a weight associated with it. So what happens is after the values are input from the pixel values from the image are input to this particular layer, the weights are assigned. So in the first stage, the weights would be random. And then after that, the weights of the sec based on the uh, values from the first layer, the values of weights for the second layer are calculated. And based on that, then the predictions are calculated, which would be the probability values. And uh, let's say if the probability for, in this case, one, class one is highest, then that image would be assigned to class one. So a layer, number of layers decide how deep the network is. So with just two layers or few layers, the network would be a, a shallow network and so it would be shallow learning. However, if there are much more complicated images such as, uh, let's say we have bike image here, then the layers could become deeper. So there could be hundreds of layers uh, within the neural network and that uh, could be called as deep learning. And essentially, in each of these uh, neural networks, uh, this is a kind of the general principle of how things work. You have the input, and then you have the weights for layer one, layer two, and based on that, we get the predictions. Now, to check if the predictions are close to what we have in the actual target, we compare it with the actual target, that is the true targets, and to do that comparison, there is something called as a loss function that is used, and that loss function gives us a loss score. So idea always is to minimize this loss score. So lower the score, uh, the closer the predictions are to the true targets. And let's say we run through this particular loop in first iteration, and if the predictions are far off from the true targets, then we run uh, we run it through the optimizer, we changes the weights within the neural network, and then the predictions are recalculated, and this cycle repeats until we get, we reach a final score that we are satisfied with. And those are then the predictions that uh, we would be using. So that's a very, uh, very general explanation of uh, what deep learning is and what neural network is. And if this is completely new, don't worry about it. As we go through this series, we'll be going into much, uh, much deeper technical details as we come across them while coding. 
And here is the picture of the creator of Keras. Uh, we, uh, his name is Francois Chole. And this particular library was first released in the year 2015. So on his particular website, there are a list of talks as well. So you can check those out. And this is a book in deep learning. So this is not a sponsored video, but I'll highly, highly recommend you check out this book. You can get your hands on it. Uh, this is a very good introduction to deep learning with Python as the title says. And if not, that's okay because we'll be covering m most of the details for Keras in this particular series. And I uh, would also recommend checking out the uh, Keras website, which is keras.io. And these would be the two primary resources that we'll be using in this, uh, in this series. Now, why are we so interested to learn about Keras? Uh, here, if you look at this particular plot on the left hand side, we see that the uh, Keras usage is much, much higher. And this is a plot for top five teams on Kaggle. Again, this plot is from the Keras uh, website. So Keras is a user friendly library. It is uh, easy to learn, easy to implement, and it's very, very powerful. And here, Again, if you look at the primary plus auxiliary ML machine learning software tools that are used by top five Kegel teams, again, we have Keras in the top two right here. And uh, we also have scikit-learn. And if you have been following this channel, you'll probably be happy to see this that because we have covered this in great, great detail in the intermediate series. So the learning Keras is going to give you much more uh, much of the required tools to get into deep learning problems. So Keras is a deep learning API that is written in Python. And uh, as the particular graphic shows here, we have CPU, GPU, uh, and TPU, that is the tensor processing unit. TensorFlow can talk to each of these and run computations and what Keras is, is a layer on top of TensorFlow that abstracts out the complexities in writing code in TensorFlow. So it makes it easier to uh, work with CPU, GPU, TPU, perform, uh, write models that perform deep learning uh, using TensorFlow, but then we write everything in Keras. So that's uh, an easier way to put it is Keras is uh, easy way to build models for deep learning. And the, as we can see, the stable version was released in June of 2020. As I said earlier, this is a simple, flexible, and powerful tool. You can make it more complicated as you get more uh, expertise in Keras. So you can start writing things from scratch if you need to. That's also a possibility. Now for installing Keras, the suggestion is to install TensorFlow 2. So if you go to a TensorFlow website here, you can see uh, that these are the commands that are used for uh, installing. So the requirements, software requirements are Python 3.7 to 3.9. Yeah, Ubuntu should be 16.04 or later. Windows 7 or later with C++ redistributable and Mac OS 10.12.6 Sierra or later. So, um, so this is what is needed, but if you do not have this on your machine, that is still not an issue because most of this can be done in Google Colab. And we'll talk about that in the following video. To install Keras on your machine, this is uh, using pip install. So pip install uh, dash dash upgrade pip. And after the pip is upgraded, we can install uh, TensorFlow. Now, just to give you mm, a flavor of what Keras code looks like, uh, not going into details of it, but just to uh, get you thinking about 
uh, its similarity to what we have been uh, studying so far in this series in the beginner and intermediate series it's pretty similar uh, so uh, it won't be a learning completely new set because this is kind of uh, customized to within python so you'll get used to this pretty quickly uh, here what uh, the very first step shown here is we import the library from tensorflow.keras.models import import sequential because we are going to show how a sequential model is built so we create a model initialize the model and then we import another library import dense and here are the layers of the neural network that we are creating model.add dense and then we uh, specify the number of units we specify the activation function and again we specify the second layer so we have 10 units uh, we specify the activation function softmax and after that that particular set of code is compiled and here we can specify the loss function so you remember earlier we talked about why we need a loss function to compare how close or far we are from the our target true values so here we have categorical cross entropy and the optimizer used is hgd matrix again we can specify accuracy and finally we can then use the compiled model to fit on the train data again here uh, makes it very easy we can specify the batch size uh, we can specify number of epochs and finally we can evaluate the model that is learned up here on the test data set by calling model dot evaluate again we can specify the batch size and finally uh, once the predictions are done uh, once sorry once the model is evaluated we can uh, and if we are happy with the metrics then we can go ahead and use the uh, final model to create predictions as we can see here using model dot predict so that is the uh, that is the set of code in Keras that we would be uh, using to create models for solving deep learning problems. And the most of the work is that, that I've seen is on this particular set, stacking layers. So here is what you'll need an intuition as to uh, how to build layers, what to use, what activation functions to use, what un units you need to use, etc. So this is a uh, important part that will get hang off as you practice through this. And the second one is uh, right here, what type of loss functions to use, metrics to use, and what type of optimizer to use for a given uh, type of problem. And finally, uh, before ending this video, I just like to leave you with this uh, note from Francois Chole, which says, uh, "Multi stage. Uh, what deep learning is essentially a multi stage way to learn data representations. And as you'll see later on in upcoming videos, very simple mechanisms uh, such as what we saw earlier in a very small example." just by updating the weights of each layer uh, we can uh, approx we can come closer to the true values so the predicted values can come closer to the true values and if we iterate that loop of updating the um, updating the weights of the each of the layers and checking the loss score uh, reducing going smaller and smaller you can solve a pretty complex problem and that's why uh, he's saying that very simple mechanisms sufficiently scaled up can end up looking like magic so that was it then for this video if you have any comments or suggestions uh, or any specific topics that you definitely want to see covered in this video in this series please let me know in the comments uh, below and as always stay safe and I'll hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you.